Hello and welcome. In this video, we will explore the concept of power factor in electrical engineering. We will break down what it is, how it's calculated, and why it's so important in AC circuits. Let's begin with the fundamental definition. Power factor is defined in two primary ways. First, it is the cosine of the angle between the voltage and the current in an AC circuit. Second, power factor, often abbreviated as PF, is the ratio of real power to apparent power. Let's look at the formula. The power factor, or PF, is equal to the cosine of the angle phi. This ratio is calculated by taking the real power, denoted by the letter P, and dividing it by the apparent power, denoted by the letter S. Real power is the power that actually does work, and it's measured in kilowatts, or kW. Apparent power is the total power in the circuit, which is the vector sum of real and reactive power, and it's measured in kilovolt amperes, or kVA. To understand this relationship better, we can use a concept called the power triangle. Imagine a right angle triangle. The horizontal base of this triangle represents the real power, P. The vertical side represents the reactive power, Q, which is measured in kilovolt ampere reactive, or kVAR. The hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the triangle, represents the apparent power, S. The angle between the real power, the base, and the apparent power, the hypotenuse, is the phase angle, phi. As we know from basic circuit theory, the formula for real power is P equals V times A times the cosine of phi, where V is voltage and I is current. From this, we can rearrange the formula to solve for the cosine of phi. Cosine of phi equals P divided by the product of V and I. Since apparent power, S, is equal to V times I, this confirms our earlier definition, power factor is real power divided by apparent power. Looking back at our power triangle, we can see these relationships visually. The base is real power, which is V times A times cosine of phi. The vertical side is reactive power, which is V times A times sine of phi and the hypotenuse is apparent power, which is V times I. The angle phi is the crucial element here. It represents the phase angle, which is the time difference or shift between the voltage and current waveforms. Let's examine how this phase angle changes depending on the type of load in the circuit. We can visualize this with three graphs. Each graph plots voltage and current against time. First, let's consider a purely resistive load. In this case, the voltage and current waveforms are perfectly aligned. They rise and fall together, reaching their peaks and crossing the zero line at the exact same time. We say that the voltage and current are in phase. For a resistive load, the phase angle phi is zero. Next, let's look at an inductive load. In this graph, you can see that the current waveform is shifted to the right compared to the voltage waveform. This means the current reaches its peak value after the voltage does. We describe this by saying the current lags behind the voltage. The time difference between them is represented by the phase angle, phi. This condition is known as a lagging power factor. Finally, we have the capacitive load. Here, the situation is reversed. The current waveform is shifted to the left of the voltage waveform. This means the current reaches its peak value before the voltage does. In this case, we say the current leads the voltage. This condition is known as a leading power factor. Now, let's dive deeper into each of these scenarios. First, the lagging power factor. As we saw, this occurs when the current lags behind the voltage. This happens in a circuit that is predominantly inductive. Inductive loads are very common and include devices like inductors, transformers, electromagnetic relays, induction motors, coils, and even some types of lamps. The phasor diagram for a lagging power factor shows the voltage vector, V, pointing horizontally to the right. The current vector, I, is shown pointing downwards at an angle phi, visually representing that it is lagging behind the voltage. Next, we have the leading power factor. This occurs when the current leads the voltage. This is characteristic of a circuit that is predominantly capacitive. Examples of capacitive loads include capacitor banks, overexcited synchronous motors, synchronous condensers, and various radio circuits. The phasor diagram for a leading power factor again shows the voltage vector, V, pointing horizontally. This time, 
the current vector, I, is shown pointing upwards at an angle phi, visually representing that it is leading the voltage. Finally, there is the unity power factor. This is the ideal scenario that occurs when the voltage and current are perfectly in phase. The phase angle, phi, is equal to zero. This happens in a circuit that is purely resistive. In this case, the phasor diagram shows both the voltage vector, V, and the current vector, I, pointing in the same direction, indicating there is no phase difference between them. Related to the power triangle is another important concept, the impedance triangle. The impedance triangle helps us understand the relationship between resistance, reactance, and total impedance in a circuit. Imagine another right angle triangle. The horizontal base represents resistance, R. The vertical side represents reactance, which for an inductive load is inductive reactance, denoted as X subscript L. The hypotenuse represents the total opposition to current flow, which is called impedance, Z. The angle in the corner is again our phase angle, phi. From basic trigonometry, we know that the cosine of an angle in a right angle triangle is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. In the impedance triangle, this means the cosine of phi is equal to resistance, R, divided by impedance, Z. This gives us another way to calculate the power factor. There's a direct link between the power triangle and the impedance triangle. You can convert the power triangle to the impedance triangle by dividing each side of the power triangle by the square of the current, or I squared. Let's see how this works. Real power, P, is equal to I squared times R. Reactive power, Q, is equal to I squared times X. Apparent power, S, is equal to I squared times Z. If you take each of these equations and divide by I squared, you are left with R, X, and Z, which are the sides of the impedance triangle. So, why is all of this important? The value of the power factor has significant practical implications. A high power factor, meaning a value close to 1, indicates that power is being used effectively. Most of the power being supplied to the circuit is being converted into useful work. On the other hand, a low power factor, meaning a value much less than 1, indicates that power is not being used effectively. A significant portion of the power is reactive power, which sloshes back and forth in the circuit without doing any real work. This leads to higher overall current, which in turn results in greater energy losses in the system, primarily as heat. Finally, let's consider the difference between DC and AC circuits. In a DC, or direct current, circuit, there is no concept of power factor. This is because the voltage and current are constant, and there is no frequency, so there can be no phase difference. In an AC, or alternating current, circuit, the value of the power factor always lies between 0 and 1. A power factor of 1, or unity, is the most efficient, while a power factor of 0 means no real work is being done. In summary, the power factor is a critical measure of electrical efficiency in AC systems. It is the cosine of the phase angle between voltage and current, and it represents the ratio of useful power to total power. Understanding and managing the power factor is essential for designing efficient and cost-effective electrical systems.